everyone. Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Pat and Matt podcast. I am Pat and he is Matt. And today we'll, we will be talking about Marshall's last two soccer games, Arsenal, our favorite sports movie. What else do we have? And a couple of viewer questions. Viewer questions, yes. So we'll start off with Marshall soccer. They've had two games. Let's go to the game on Sunday first. They won 10 to 1, dominant. And it was pretty good. They 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 can possess the ball really well. They have good passing. I think they just need to work on their finishing a bit more. And today they had a game and they won two to nothing. And same thing, I think they, they're gonna have passing, possession, but they need to work on their finishing. And they had a C USA player of the week. All right. Is his name Victor Diaz? Uh, yes. Thirty-one. So if anyone goes to those games, watch out for him. And yeah, that's uh, anything else. Do you have anything? To well, say can I? Have, yeah, I'd like to. I, you know me. I want to talk Marshall soccer. Thanks, Pat. Well, they the the two victories. The first one was against West Virginia Tech. Yeah. And then today it was East Tennessee State University. Uh, big news today. First clean sheet of the season, right, Pat? And then, you know what I liked about Sunday's game. Pat and I, we, we only got to stay the first half, but we liked what we saw. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what really stood out to me, Pat. Mm-hmm. I like that even though it's a game they knew they were going to win, I liked what I saw in the starting lineup. Why don't you tell everybody what the starting lineup was like? So, what do you mean? Well, you know, normally, did you think that was the starting lineup that you're going to see at the end of the season play against West Virginia Tech? Um, in the first half, I, didn't, I did not think... That's what I meant. I, I think that, you know, they knew this was a game they should win. Yeah. And so I really thought it was smart by the coaching staff that they put in players that probably won't start later in the season uh-huh. to get real game experience. Not a lot of teams and coaches uh-huh. will do that. You know what it kind of reminded me of? Yeah. We like to watch college football, don't we? Yeah. When Alabama plays a team they know they're going to win. Yeah. They usually start out with their starting lineup, right? And they get and up like 24 to nothing, and then they just sit them for the After the first quarter, 24 nothing, game's over, and then they start substituting players. But, Pat, do you think that helps the players that are getting substituted in when your team's already winning 49 to nothing or 30 to nothing? Um, I, it helps them with game experience. But it, do you think it's tougher at the beginning of a game or to enter a game if you were playing soccer where you're already winning 8 to 0? What would be tougher? To start the game or to enter a game 8 to 0? Right. So that gives those players some real game experience that's a real pressure. Because if you go into a game and it's already 8-1, if you give up two goals, big deal. It's 8-3. You might be mad at yourself, but you're not feeling that pressure. So I thought that was really cool how Marshall puts those players in in the beginning of the season that give them that real experience that might not otherwise get to play. Yes. But I think for Alabama, I think those put those guys could probably start the game if that team would still win, well, just because of their recruiting. Right. Well, that's what Marshall yeah. did in soccer. You know, yeah. they could have won. The, you know, it might not have been ten one. I know they put their starters yeah. in the second half, but it, it would have probably been five one, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really liked it. So we're, we're excited about Marshall soccer. Mm-hmm. I think they have a good chance for the tournament again. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to Arsenal. So when was Arsenal's last game? They played Sunday against Man City. Yes. And they lost one to nothing in the third minute. That was the only goal. It was a tough loss. I was expecting more goals probably from City, but I guess one nothing isn't as bad as I thought. Right. It's Manchester City, so. Pat, I agree with you. Manchester City now, I don't think it's a stretch to say, is the best soccer have, club in the world right now. They have the best defense. They have it. I I think it's better than Liverpool right now because Van Dijk is injured, Joe Gomez is injured. They had to play Henderson at the back, and he's a midfielder. But Man City have Joao Cancelo, Kyle Walker, Ruben Diaz, John Stones, Laporte, and they have like the best goalkeeper in the world. It's, they have Ederson. It's an all-star cast, and you know when I watch Man City. You know, we're big Arsenal fans. Our favorite team is Arsenal. But the only other team I really try to make appointment soccer watching is Man City Mm -hmm. because a lot of, you know, folks that aren't used to soccer, it's called the beautiful game. When you watch Man City play, it really is the beautiful game. Mm -hmm. The way they pass the ball, the way they move not on the ball. You know, Arsenal kind of grew into the game, but that first 20 minutes, Pat, was utter domination by Man City. I, I, you know, I couldn't believe... a team the caliber of Arsenal 
was so overwhelmed that first 20 minutes. And I wanted to say one other thing to our viewers. And Pat might roll his eyes at me. But Pat, what I always tell you is the most important thing in soccer. The first touch. First touch. If you watch Man City, their first touch is incredible. There were times in that game that I watched. I watched the clock, and a player didn't touch the ball more than two or three times. They just pass. They pass. They pass. And the way they're able to do that is because their first touch is so incredible. Now, Pat, I know you're a younger guy, and the younger guys like the one-on-one -on -one school moves. Yeah. They like breaking ankles. But let me tell you, you younger players, if you want to become an elite soccer player, work on your first touch. And there's no excuse not to. As long as you have a wall at your house, you can work on the first touch. The announcers actually said 10 minutes in the game, they were watching Man City. And they said it's mesmerizing. Every time a Man City player gets the ball, he has five or six options because they move so well off the ball and their first touch is so strong. So Arsenal uh -huh. grew into the game, yeah. but this was really a game that, mm, for the most part, Man City was, um, was dominating. Now, let's say one more thing before we move on, Pat. Yeah. Arsenal plays Thursday uh -huh. in Europa League against Benfica. What do you think about that game? Uh, I don't know. I think they probably should win. But you never know with Arsenal. Right. I mean, that's a good way to put it. They're they're talented, but they're not consistent. Yeah. So they could either win 4-1 or lose 1-4. Yeah. But what do you think? Give us your prediction. Uh, I think I'm going to predict a 2-1 Arsenal win. I like it, Pat. I'm going to go so far as mm -hmm. to predict a 3-1 Arsenal win. I think they can do it. So I think that wraps up the Arsenal. But what's next on our agenda? Well, I want to talk about Man City's midfield and their attacking core okay and their midfield is outstanding they have Gundogan he's stepped up this season when De Bruyne is out and then they have they got they just got De Bruyne back of course versus Arsenal mm -hmm. and they have Phil Foden who's probably going to be one of the best players in three or four years quote me on that <laughs> <laughs> and their attacking core they're Sterling they have their striker Who's their striker usually? They, well, they're, they usually rotate their strikers. Um, striker. Gabriel uh, Jesus go, goes yeah. in there every now and then. They just they they've got a, a Aguero's injured. Yeah. They just have an all star cast. I mean, mm -hmm. they they are the best team the way they move the ball around, but it helps mm -hmm. when they got the best players. Yeah. So let's move on to our favorite sports movie. This is what we talked about last week. That's yes. what we said we we're going to discuss. Um, all right. And sorry for the delay. This was we were supposed to make it on Sunday, but we just didn't find the time. And today we had a little bit of time, so. All right, Pat. Out. Okay. Kick it off. What do you think? Favorite sports so movie? So my favorite sports movie has to be Space Jam. <laughs> Without a doubt, Space Jam, Michael Jordan. Why? But why Space Jam? I'm interested. Um, I think it's pro it's probably one of the first sports movies that I probably watched and I probably first really liked. Cause I'm I remember probably when I was younger, probably just because of Looney Tunes, probably. And I, I, I think it had a really interesting build-up. Like, the NBA players lose all of their talents to the Monstars. And they have Michael Jordan has to play in a game to defeat them. I think it's a good movie. I like it, Pat. I might have to check out a little bit. I've not seen Space Jam before. Well, he, he, I, he's made fun of me for, what, for Space Jam being my, my favorite movie. Well, not simply because there's so many good sports movies out there. Now, Pat and I, we don't compare notes. Uh -huh. Pat might know what my favorite movie is, but yeah. I'm going to give a little build-up. Pat, this movie has heartache. This movie has inspiration. Let me take a guess. No, no. Is this this movie has overcoming near insurmountable odds. This movie has tear-jerking tear moments. This movie will bring chills to me every time I watch it. Do you have any guess what it is, Pat? Rudy. 1993, Rudy. Daniel Rudy Rudiger, in his quest to first become a student at the University of Notre Dame, mm -hmm. then to make the football team, mm -hmm. and then to play in an actual football game for the University mm -hmm. of Notre Dame. Pat, this movie, I, I can't say enough good things about it. It teaches you about hard work. Everything about Rudy is excellent. You can watch it with your family. It's clean, wholesome fun. It's got a great message. I watched it with you, Pat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you appreciate it as much as I do, did you? Uh, probably not. Right, but you might grow into yeah. it. 
Rudy, hands down, is the best sports movie ever. Now, we, uh, we got some comments from some other people. Yeah. Adrian, let us know what his favorite sports movies are. So are you ready to uh, announce? Yes, his favorite sports movie is Caddyshack. A great I one. personally have not watched that before. So can you tell me what that's about? It's a movie about golf mm -hmm. and a little adult humor. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll probably be ready for Caddyshack when you're about 15 or who 16. Star who stars in that? Well, the, it's got a lot of different stars. There's Bill Murray. Uh, there's just all kinds of different Rodney Dangerfields in it. Great movie, but you got to wait a little longer. You can watch it. He also I like said it Tala, Tala, Tala Dinga Nights. Tala Dinga Nights? Tala Dinga Nights. The Legend of Ricky Bobby? Yep, and he says that because he was an extra in the movie. Oh, a star. Yeah, a star. A star in the a movie. Star. I see. I a see. Star. Oh. So well, now we have our question. We're going to view our questions. I like yeah, it. All right. Our, quest, our viewer question. And this is from my aunt, Jean. Okay. And it says, should QBs be allowed to select players for for roster, for their roster? So that's, so should professional yeah. quarterbacks be yeah. allowed to select players for their roster? Okay, I don't think... As that, opposed to, like, yes. the general manager and folks? Uh-huh. Okay. So I don't think that can happen in college, obviously. But in the NFL, I think they should allow the quarterbacks to do that. But I only think the quarterbacks should do it for offense because... They wouldn't know enough about defense, I think. So, if you have a situation with who's Deshaun Watson, let's take him. Right, I'll he take has him. no he has no stars around him, so I think he should be allowed to request his own trade, um, give give some recommendations for some trades, or even do the trades almost. Didn't they trade like DeAndre Hopkins right before the season? Or? Well, they traded him for a washed up David Johnson and the second round pick okay. and a bag of Fritos, probably. Well, you didn't like that, did you? No, but. So you think that they, they should? I like you know, Pat. I'll say this: uh, if you asked me this a few years ago, I would have said no. You know, that's not the player's role. But football is changing, just like you know everything else, and I do think that nowadays. The quarterback is the is the main player on a football team, um, and I can almost guarantee you Tom Brady is giving recommendations who wants to be around, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure he's telling I'm sure he's telling the front office. So yes, I don't I, think he wants to recommend to trade players after they're showing the Super Bowl. Right, but he's what I'm saying. He's got a lot of pool, and so I think like Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, mm -hmm. all these other quarterbacks. Yes, I think that they should have a really big say in who their supporting cast is going to be because really you're only as good as your quarterback anymore in football. Look at all the mm -hmm. trades they do on draft day to get to take a gamble on somebody that might be a good quarterback. Yeah, so if you've got a good one, keep them happy. Quarterbacks quarterbacks are definitely they're definitely the better players in the league. They will always win the MVPs. Right. Because no other player has basically a chance because they don't score as many touchdowns as them. Right. The last running back uh, the last running back to win MVP wasn't Adrian Peterson. It may have been. I mean, yeah, it's a quarterback dominant league, so but it's gotta I, keep the quarterback I happy. I actually have a question. Well, this who, is a curveball. Who do you think will win the MVP next year in the NFL? Ooh. You know? I will say mine first. Okay, go. I need some time to think about that. I feel like this player is going to be very good again next year. He was good this year, but he had a sh lingering shoulder injury towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. But I think Kyler Murray will. Okay. And the runner-up will be Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry is just dominant. Well, you, again, specific, you're given the winner mm -hmm. and the runner-up. Yep. Um, I'm going to stick with the quarterback, Pat. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Without having more time to think about it, I like your Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. I think he's one of these guys that all of a sudden is poised for just a huge breakout. You know, mm -hmm. offenses are the name of the game and all of football, not just the NFL now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kyler Murray. And now I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. Okay. We've got one more question. Okay. From one of our loyal viewers, Jenny. Um, she wanted to know, do you think Ohio State should have made the college football playoff this year? Me first or you first, Pat? Your choice. I'll go first. All right. I would not have said that before the Clemson Ohio. I would have said I would say Ohio State should not be in the playoffs. But after the Clemson game, when they beat Clemson, because I watched most of the game, I saw how good Justin Fields was, and they beat Clemson. So I thought I think this team should be in the playoffs. Because if you think about it, what other teams are going to be in the playoffs that are good as Ohio State? 
We don't like them, but they're, they're a good team. Well, Pat, let me say two things. I agree with you that we don't like Ohio State. I strongly agree. Uh -huh. I strongly disagree with you that they shouldn't okay. make the playoff. Let me tell you uh, why. Let me. I, okay, they played less games. Do I get but, to speak or? But but, do you want Texas A and M in there? Can I just make my case before you, and then you can say what you'd like. The Big Ten made the decision at the beginning of the season not to play football, and they thought every other conference was going to follow along, and the only one that followed along was the Pac-12. And then it was kind of egg on their face because all these other conferences thought for themselves and said, no, we're playing football. So, Ohio, the Big Ten scrambles to put a football season together late, mind you. Mm -hmm. They have trouble getting the number of games in. They've got to bend the rules to allow Ohio State to play in its own conference championship game. And Pat, you know as well as I do, it's harder to go through a 10-game season undefeated than a 5-game season undefeated. There's one of those games every year where you're better than the opposing team, yeah. but for whatever reason it's close. Yeah. Guess who that was for Ohio State? Indiana. Indiana. Folks, Indiana is not an elite team. You know, I, I, They're not. That's just as simple as that. So, Pat, I see where you're coming from. The results don't justify the selection. Yes, they beat Clemson, but our criteria from the beginning is what is this criteria that you have to have? A five-game season for crying out loud. Big Ten made the decision not to play football. Ohio State is a member of the Big Ten. They shouldn't have been selected. Simple as that. Oh, well, let me back my case up. Okay. So, first of all, you know how many touchdowns Justin Fields had on the Clemson defense? No, I Six don't. touchdowns. Oh. Six touchdowns. Okay. Also, who is going to get in there for Ohio, instead of Ohio State? I am not a Texas A&M fan. Texas A&M played an entire SEC season. Only lost to Alabama, the same team that Ohio State lost to, and they played five more games. So, hey, Ohio State chose to be a member of the Big Ten, and we shouldn't be bending rules for the Big Ten. Now, people might say, well, Matt, you're a fan of Notre Dame. Why'd they bend rules to allow Notre Dame to play in the ACC? And we'll go back to podcast number two, because they can. So, I guess Ohio <laughs> State... Right, that's what I said. I guess that's Ten. Ohio State. Bottom line is... They want the marquee teams in this college football playoff. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Honestly, it's not about the best teams anymore. It's about what teams are going to draw the biggest ratings. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that. I know a lot of people will say, well, that applies to Notre Dame just like you said. But guess what? If I'm a Notre Dame fan, I don't care, right? Yeah. So Ohio State fans are saying the same things. But no, Ohio State shouldn't have gotten in. So I think that's where we wrap this up. <laughs> we have, this is our longest video, I think. It'll be around 18 minutes. It was spirited though. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. And also, just to, just a little teaser. Oh. This isn't for next episode. This is for episodes in the future. But this summer, we should have some guests on the show. This summer, since we're gonna we're gonna get a little <laughs> we're gonna get a little bit better. Yeah. Well, this is new to me. I, yeah. I like having studio guests yes. in in our Kelly studio. Yes. Okay, I like that. I, I don't didn't know, know that. We'll put them. Oh, we'll, we'll we'll fancy the studio up a little you bit. Might just put them in the middle. Right? Hey, they'll be our honored guests. I didn't know we were gonna do this, but I'm liking the idea of it more and more. We'll make sure it's 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 fun to do. So make sure to like and subscribe. Our TikTok. I can't believe it, but somehow on our TikTok we have 248 followers. I I don't know what happened. I woke up That's one great. morning and I had 99 plus notifications from TikTok. I was like, "What is this?" There it is. So we want the email address. We want your yeah. all's questions. Oh what yeah, Pat and Matt Podcast at Gmail dot com. The Pat and Matt Podcast at Gmail dot com. Sorry. Comment. Comments will be on. And thanks for watching. We appreciate it, everybody. Bye See you guys. next time. Bye.